I come in here to use the facilities, only to discover that somebody beat me to it. Well, good morning, guys. This is Santa Cruz Biological Research Station. This is what this place has that Madre Selva didn't have. That's a solar station. So, no more noisy generators, but now we can charge our batteries and have lights and things like that all day long. We don't have to wait for the generator to be turned on. But here's the main building, the dining hall of the uh, station here. Food area, coffee, absolute must. So here's our drinking water, just two bucket system, filter there, drips down into that bucket, and that's our uh, drinkable water. And then over here, we've got, you know, a bookcase with field guides and, you know, novels, <sighs> a glamour magazine. All right, guys, so <laughs> check this out. I come in here to use the facilities, only to discover that somebody beat me to it. So then, I go into the next one, see if that one's occupied, and I discover this. So, yeah, I, uh, I think I'm gonna go find a bush somewhere. So I took inventory of all my camera equipment this morning. It got pretty, pretty wet. So I'm gonna let it all dry out. I was out filming a little bit this morning. Some toucans were out and so I was filming those, but yeah, I'm gonna let my camera gear, I got some silica stuff and you know, I'll just dry out my camera gear before I go and film some stuff for the reptile channel, but guys, check out the view from the back of my tambo. This is unbelievable. You ready? If there was ever a vision of the afterlife, of Valhalla, of heaven, whatever you want to call it, I'm sitting in it right now. And I've got coffee to boot, which makes it even better. All right, so we just had breakfast, and over breakfast, we tallied the count of all the species that we found at the other place at Madre Selva. It was 57 species in a matter of what, three or four days that we were there. But right now, I'm grounded. And I'm grounded because I have to charge the batteries. And with solar power, it takes a long time to charge the batteries, and most of my batteries are dead. Anyway, the other thing that I have to do is I have to take some time and organize all of my video files. If I dump them into one folder, it is going to be an absolute nightmare when I get back to the studio. So I have to make sure that every one of the daily vlogs gets put into its own folder. Every episode that I shoot for the reptile channel by frogs, by snakes, by species, by location, they have to go into their own files and that takes a lot of time to do, but it is so necessary that I do it because if I don't, again, when I get back to the studio, it's gonna be a nightmare to sort through all of this. So if I take the time to do it now, even though I am just itching to get out there and explore this forest, but if I take the time to do it now, it's gonna be so much easier in the editing process when I get back to the studio. Okay, so I got all the batteries charged as much as they're going to be in the amount of time that it took me to get all of the video files and all the photo files organized and where they're gonna be. I went and found a bush, and now I'm gonna go explore this rainforest. Check out what I just found. <laughs> Look at that. That is an enormous land snail. I don't know that I've ever seen one this big. Look at that thing. 
Check this out. He just sucked himself back in as soon as I picked him up, but he was out crawling around and that is one of the biggest land snails I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> So people have often talked about visiting this place and getting a sense of euphoria, like a lightheadedness. And I always thought that it was because of how beautiful this place was and how majestic it was, but this place produces one third of the planet's oxygen. And so the oxygen content right here where I'm standing is really high, let alone that it's a hot, wet, soupy air that I'm breathing in and it makes it kind of difficult to breathe and yeah, I am getting lightheaded. So think about this for a second. This is all first growth forest here at Santa Cruz, which means that this forest is 50 million years old. I can't even begin to wrap my brain around the enormous expansive time that that is. And just think of all the millions of species that appeared and evolved and then became extinct in all of that expansive time. And as a matter of fact, Titanoboa probably lived exactly where I'm standing right now. But here's the thing, in 50 million years, with millions of species of animals and plants and birds that have evolved over that time. In the geological clock, there has been one species that has been here for just one minute. And that one species is threatening to destroy all of this. And why are they doing this? For something as stupid as money, for greed, for the rubber here, the oil. They would destroy all of this for grazing land for cheaper meat. So in 50 million years and all these millions of species that have existed here, only one of them is threatening to destroy it for something as stupid as a human invention of money. <sighs> well done, humanity. Okay, guys. Check this out. This was target species and number two for the Peruvian rainforest. This is a rainbow boa. They get their name from having an iridescent sheen on their bodies all the way down and it creates this rainbow effect. Hence the name rainbow boa. And he is so gentle and so chill. He's not trying to bite me. He's not trying to escape. Look at those tongue flicks, which is telling me that they're not a rapid tongue flick. It's not agitated. He's just checking out his surroundings. Look at that beautiful snake. I've never understood why people fear these animals. I've never understood why people have a phobia about these incredibly beautiful, gentle animals. And I just want to sit here and hold him for like four or five hours. Mike and Matt just got back from their walk and they found another awesome snake. Check this out. Whoa, look at that big bruiser. Look at that tail. Oh man. Get a picture quick. That is fantastic. We haven't even been here for a single day yet. We got a Peruvian rainbow boa and now a Peruvian red tail boa. Wow. He ain't even scarred up or nothing. Oh, just gorgeous. Hey, amigos, estamos de mucha suerte. Sí. Bueno, bueno. You guys have good, good luck. Hey, ¿Cómo se esto en español? Boa constrictor, ¿sí? Mantona. Oh, Mantona. 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 Yeah, local name is Mantona. Mantona. Ah. Muy bonita. 
All right, guys, so today was an absolutely amazing day here at Santa Cruz. I have been to a lot of places all over this planet, but this place is something just incredible. Got to see a rainbow boa, and then Mike and Matt bring up the red tail boa, and all the other snakes and lizards, and just rainforest critters. I mean, it's just so amazing here. And like I said this morning, if there is a vision of the afterlife, this place is it. So this lake behind me is full of giant Arapurama. They are the largest freshwater fish in the world. There's angel fish in there. There's anything that you see in an aquarium at a pet store that says tropical fish on it. It lives right here. So in the days to come, I'm gonna stick a GoPro in this lake. I may even go for a little swim. So yeah, we're here for a week, so I'm going to do a lot more exploring of this place. And right now, it's shower time. So love the planet, keep your life in balance, and rattle on. <laughs>